evening. I'm Johnny Carson, and, and you're the audience. And let's let's keep it that way. Now, those of you, by the way, who forgot to set your clocks back, will start laughing at this monologue in about an hour. I was right there. In a good mood tonight? We got a good show for you. Uh, we have... You people who came out to California for the last weekend, this was, you've seen our rainy season. That was it, Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Did you ever see so much rain? You see, Los Angeles people are not used to rain. We had about, what, an inch of rain? Yeah. Absolute panic in Los Angeles. People in Los Angeles have a hard time handling any water that doesn't have bubbles and a slice of lime in it. <laughs> anyway, Eric Dickerson yeah. of the Rams is gone. It's gone. <laughs> I tuned in the marathon from New York. Dickerson beat him back to Indianapolis. <laughs> Four Rams are not doing too well. I saw the game the other day. Instead of a wave, the fans mooned the players. <laughs> now, you know, I live at Malibu. I pick up the paper this morning, and guess who are leasing a home right. out at Malibu? <laughs> Jim and Tammy Baker. I should have known. I saw a Maybelline truck pull up the other day. Just down Big van. One loading, guys, one loading stuff. Anyway, I haven't run into him yet, but I probably will. Uh, Tammy is a is a <laughs> is a shrewd businesswoman. You know, she she records. She made a record, an album, but her records are all shaped like boomerangs, so you can't throw them away. <laughs> Speaking of Jim and Tammy, did you read that Jerry Falwell resigned today as head of the moral majority? Yes, ah, uh, yeah. Jerry's going back to his old job as test pilot for water slides. <laughs> A lot going on. This is election day, I guess, all around the country. And here in Los Angeles, we are having what they call the local propositions. Now, only in Los Angeles would they come up with some weird propositions on the ballot. Are you familiar with Proposition G here in Los Angeles? No, I'm not. It would make it a crime. Proposition G <laughs> would make it a crime to have a silkworm missile in your glove compartment <laughs> on the Ventura Freeway during rush hour. They expect a big turnout in West Hollywood. Uh, now, the big issue in West Hollywood is whether it's legal for more than two people to stand in the doorway during an earthquake. <laughs> Some of you forgot to set your clocks back. <laughs> oh, here's an interesting item. Judge Wapner. You all know Judge Wapner? Yeah. Okay. He just offered Supreme Court nominee Douglas Ginsburg a week as guest judge on People's Court so he could get some experience. <laughs> now, here, we go. Well, here we go again. They're, they're gearing up for another fight back in Washington. As you know, Reagan nominated Judge Robert Bork a couple of months ago, and he got shot down. So he has now nominated uh, Judge Douglas Ginsburg to be on the Supreme Court. Douglas Ginsburg is 41 years old. The Supreme Court? He's younger than the Supremes. <laughs> he might be a fine man, but I don't know. Reagan, Reagan's got a big thing with bearded judges. Yeah. Yeah. You notice Bork and now Ginsburg. And Bork is trying to help Ginsburg. He said, when he goes in front of the committee, part your beard in the middle. <laughs> And if Ginsburg doesn't make it, Reagan's going to appoint the Smith brothers. <laughs> anyway, the president said, Reagan said just the other day at a press conference that his new nominee is going to be tough on crime, which puts the entire Reagan administration in jeopardy. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm, not, I'm not trying to put Judge Ginsburg down. Have you, did you ever hear of him before? No. He hasn't had what you, a lot of bench experience, apparently. He has only been a judge for one year, uh, and that was on dance fever. <laughs> 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 uh, 
We'll keep you informed as to what's happening as time goes by. Have you been reading about Prince Charles and Princess Di? Yeah, apparently they've been living in, uh, in separate castles. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, it shows you can happen, even with royalty, right? They're having a few problems, but fortunately, Charles, a pretty smart cookie, made a prenuptial agreement uh, with Princess Di. If, they get, if he divorces her, she gets $400, $400, but she gets the Falkland Islands. <laughs> The problem is, apparently, the royal couple prefer a different lifestyle. She wants to party and dance. He wants to wind sail with his ears. <laughs> what else is happening today? Today is the birthday of the Earl of Sandwich. Yet, yeah, do you know the sandwich is named after the Earl of Sandwich? In 1762. Also, along with that, next week, 7-Eleven across the country are celebrating the birthday of another great, great food great, the Duke of uh, Corndog. <laughs> you don't get the jokes out, they're just not going to work. Interesting thing on the news last night, China is having a big shakeup. They're having a changing of the guard and their new, what would you call it, elected general, what was it, chairman. chairman the new Chinese chairman is Zhao Xinyang. Zhao, I think that's correct. Zhao, well, who knows? <laughs> Anybody know the correct pronunciation? That's what I thought. <laughs> Zhao Xinyang, new secretary general of the party. He won by a score of, it was one billion to four. <laughs> Still, I'm still reeling from two uh, rather strange television specials were on this past week. Uh, first, uh, William Shatner was on one the past week trying to contact the spirit of Harry Houdini. How many of you saw that show? <laughs> kind of interesting. As a matter of fact, the amazing Randy was on that show, and he's our guest. James Randy is one of our guests tonight. They didn't get through. Unfortunately, they did not get through to Harry Houdini. Now, Mrs. Houdini gave up about 30 years ago. They tried it. No, they tried it for 30 years, but they held this seance. But they did get his machine. Uh, and the machine said, this is Houdini. I'm not in right now. I'm playing cards with William Casey. But they got... They, they, that's what it said on his machine. Don't, don't boo me. And then in another warm, warm show, Telly Savalas... Posted return to the Titanic. Did you see that? Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, when you want to do a special where you're going through the artifacts of the dead, you want a, a warm, sensitive host like Telly Savalas. <laughs> hey, look, some old broad shawl. <laughs> Telly's a nice man, but he's just this side of Stallone. Yeah. Hey, what is this here? Hey. <laughs> Next week, I understand he's going out to uh, Little Bighorn and go through Custer's pants for loose change. <laughs> I, want, I want to see that. I don't know if you saw that show. When he opened the Titanic safe, they found 100 shares of AT&T stock. <laughs> and it was exactly the same price today as it was in 1912. <laughs> What's that, sweetheart? <laughs> Weird. Uh, anyway, tonight, we got a good show. Outside of the amazing Randy, uh, I just saw him backstage, and I said, uh, did you ever wake up in the morning and just not feel amazing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we booked you under the amazing Randy, and you get up and say, hey, I don't, I don't feel amazing. But he, he's going to be here and amaze us, and uh, we have a young comedian by the name of uh, Joanne Astro is with us, and one of the greatest actors, and a nice guy, George C. Scott. <laughs> hey, 